Last night, I wanted I, I wanted that knock on the door. I wanted to see that. I wanted to see these kids just run in, run in, just just barrel rush me and just give me a hug and knock me on the ground. I'm hoping that somebody sees something or somebody knows something and comes forward. Shannon, Bella, Celeste, if you're out there, just, just just come back. Like if somebody has her, just please bring her back. I need to see everybody. I need to see everybody again. This house is not complete with without anybody here. Please bring her back. This is Chris Watt, a father whose pregnant wife and two young daughters have gone missing one unwary night. In a rudimentary perspective, we sympathize with this pitiful man as he was grieving his loved one's sudden vanishing. However, this seemingly innocent and woeful man turned out to be a horrendous criminal. After the authorities saw through his lies and unraveled the truth in this missing person's case, it was revealed that it was Chris himself who caused everything in this family's demise. He murdered his own wife, buried her in a shallow grave, slayed his two girls, and hid their bodies in an oil tank, all for the sake of his love affair. What dwells inside a husband's mind, leading him to cheat, lie, and murder his innocent family? Today on Crime Diaries, we head to Spring Lake, North Carolina to explore the case of the Watts family. Both from North Carolina, Christopher Watts and Shannon Catherine Watts met in 2010 and were married in Mecklenburg County on the 3rd of November, 2012. According to the city records, the married couple had two daughters named Bella Marie Watts, born in 2013, and Celeste Catherine Cece Watts, born in the year 2015. The family lived in a five-bedroom home, which they purchased in 2013. Soon after they bought the house, they declared bankruptcy in 2015, which indicated that, with their combined salary income, they were still drowning with their monthly mortgage, loan payments, medical bills, and credit card debt. Looking at Shannon's social media, the Watts family was rather adorable. She would frequently document their charming domestic exploits of her two young daughters and telegenic husband, Chris, who could be seen in his wife's Facebook, readily agreeing to bake a cookie and snuggling his girls up for a big hug. You spoil us with love and attention. You work so hard every day to provide for us. I love you so much. Shannon captioned an Instagram post in April 2018. Who would have thought that a few months after the Instagram post, this loving Chris Shannon knew would turn into a monster that shows no mercy even to his own kids? On the morning of August 13th, approximately 1.48 a.m., Shannon returned home from a business trip to Arizona and was driven home by her friend and colleague, Nicole Atkinson. Later that day, a concerned Atkinson reported to the police that Shannon and her kids were missing after Shannon uncharacteristically missed dozens of calls from her friend. Hi, Cece. My name's Nicole, and I'm calling because I'm concerned about um, a friend of mine. Um, I dropped her off at her house at 2 in the morning last night because we were out of town together and we were on the way back from the airport and um, she's having issues and she's pregnant and I haven't been able to get a hold of her this morning and I've gone to her house and her car's there and stuff like that but she won't answer the door, she won't answer phone calls, she won't answer text messages and I'm just really, really concerned and she had a doctor's appointment this morning and she didn't go to it and I'm just, I don't know what to do. She also failed to attend a scheduled obstetrics and gynecology appointment. After Shannon missed a business meeting, Atkinson decided to go to the Watts residence at about 12.10 p.m. When the doorbell and knocks went unanswered, Atkinson notified Christopher, who was at work, by that time. She also called the Frederick Police Department to report the unusual happening. A Frederick police officer arrived at the Watts residence to conduct a welfare check at about 1.40 p.m. During the welfare check, Christopher gave the officer permission to search the house, where the family dog was discovered unharmed, but still, no sign of Shannon and her young girls was found. Searchers discovered and retrieved Shannon's purse containing her keys and her girl's medicine. Her phone was located soon after in between the couch cushions in the family home. In the garage, her car was found, which still contained the girl's car seat. Shannon's wedding ring was found on the bedside table in their room. Together with the searched belongings of Shannon Watts, 
the FBI and the Colorado Bureau of Investigation joined the investigation the next day. Chris Watts, who was at work on the day of the disappearance, initially said that he had no idea where his family might be and that he had not seen his wife since 5.15 of the previous day when he left for work. He also gave interviews to Denver and other TV and radio stations outside the house, pleading for the return of his wife and daughters. Later on, Chris hinted that his wife might have run away and brought the kids with her, since it was revealed that their marriage was on the verge of collapse. You guys have any kind of issues, marital issues, or? We're not separation. You are. Over the interview, Chris pointed out subtle signs that his daughters were deliberately taken away by someone. All the girls' blankies are gone. Um. Their blankies they sleep with, they don't leave anywhere without them. Good. I'm hoping that somebody sees something or somebody knows something and comes forward. Like, I hope that she's somewhere safe right now and with the kids. Two days later, as news and media coverage ballooned and surfaced all over the city, Chris's secret girlfriend, his mistress, Nicole Kessinger, realized that he had fooled and lied to her. He was actually not in the process of divorce like he had told her when they met. Nicole said in an interview with the Denver Post in 2018, Chris has lied to her multiple times, that she even told him that she doesn't want to speak to him again until his family was found. With a pregnant woman and two children missing, I was going to do anything that I could, Nicole added in the interview. The thing was, is he was never hostile. It was never anything aggressive. Like, even when he spoke of his wife and the fact that they were separating, it was never, like, ill it was it was very it was still very kind it was just like this is not working and to this day even after everything that i found out i still look back at that and i don't see any red lights with the way that he spoke of his family they had only been seeing one another for a few weeks but her growing concern led nicole to go to the police with the information she had having learned about the affair the police questioned chris watts again after he denied the accusations, the police asked him if he would agree to a polygraph, from which Chris consented. He failed the polygraph and found out that he lied when he was asked whether he knew what happened to his wife and children. What happened to Shanann, Bella, and Philip? I'm hoping that somebody sees something or somebody knows something and comes forward. Like, I hope that she's somewhere safe right now and with the kids. The initial series of pitiful footage of a father looking for his missing wife and kids went into a dreadful twist. On his interrogations, the authorities had the better of Chris Watts' emotions and managed to outsmart him, resulting in unmatching lies and made-up stories that Chris suddenly uttered. He told his father that when he came home that night, he saw that his wife killed his daughters, so he went berserk. In another fake story, he had in fact strangled his pregnant wife, who was then 34 years old at the time of her death, in bed in the early morning of August 13th after a tense conversation about them separating. After an unsuccessful attempt to smother his two young daughters at home, it was reported that he had brought them along, alive, in the car, together with their mother's dead and cold body. He drove to the oil storage facility where he initiated his murder of the two small children. After he buried Shannon's body in a shallow grave, he smothered and shoved the bodies of Bella and Celeste through a small opening in a huge oil tank. They didn't leave the house. Did Shanann do something to them, and then did you feel like you had to do something to Shanann? They were at the house when I left. They were there. They weren't there. They didn't leave. They vanished. Eventually, when pressed with undeniable evidences, 
Authorities were able to make Chris Watts confess to the murders, all of which are documented by the police department through security cameras. His neighbor being one of the major keys in unfolding the truth. In the actual turn of events, Chris murdered his own life, then proceeded to slay his daughters with his own hands. He buried his wife in a shallow grave, wrapped in their bed mattress, then concealed his daughter's body in an oil tank where he works. After a failing marriage, Chris wished to restart his life by selfishly killing his defenseless pregnant wife and two girls. Chris Watts was arrested on August 15, 2018, According to the arrest affidavit and footage from a security camera in the interview room, after he subsequently confessed to murdering Shannon as he failed the polygraph test, he asked and wished to speak to his father before confessing. Watts was fired by the company he worked at on August 15, the day of his arrest. The authorities located the bodies of the Watts family on the Anadarko Petroleum site on August 16. The girls' bodies were found in crude oil storage tanks while Shannon was buried in a shallow grave nearby. The girls were placed in different oil tanks, forcing them not to be together in death. The girls were each put through a hatch at the top of the oil tank, with the lid being eight inches in diameter. According to the medical examiner, Bella had scratches on her left buttock from being shoved through this hole. A tuft of blonde hair was found on the edge of one of these hatches. On August 21st, Watts was charged with three counts of first-degree murder, including additional one count per child cited as death of a child who had not yet attained 12 years of age and the defendant was in a position of trust. My daddy is a hero. He helps me grow up strong. He was also charged with unlawful termination of pregnancy and three counts of tampering with the deceased human body. At his first appearance, he was denied bail, but later set to $5 million, with him being required to put down 15% to be released. Watts pleaded guilty to the murders on November 6th. The death penalty was not put forward by the district attorney on the request of Shannon's family, who did not wish for any further deaths. I didn't want death for you because that's not my right. Your life is between you and God now and I pray that he has mercy for you. They were supportive of the decision to accept the plea deal. On November 19th, he was sentenced to five life sentences, three consecutive and two concurrent, without a possibility of parole. Chris received an additional 48 years for the unlawful termination of Shannon's pregnancy and 36 years for the three charges of tampering with a dead body. The court is going to sentence you, sir, to uh, a life sentence in the Colorado Department of Corrections followed um, with no possibility of parole. And that is going to run consecutively to all but counts three and four. His sentence began immediately. He is currently imprisoned at Dodge Correctional Institution, a maximum security prison in Wampum, Wisconsin. The brutal murders of Shannon and her daughters Bella and Cece was undoubtedly one of the most spine-chilling cases rooting from marital affairs. This goes to show that even the closest person you have, the ones who were supposed to help and protect you, can be the ones who end up betraying you, or worse, putting your life to an end. What are your thoughts about the tragedy of the Watts family? Tell us in the comments section. Also, make sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon to get the latest updates. This has been Crime Diaries, and until next time, don't be another statistic.